Welcome to Calibration Secrets. This is where I wanted to talk about where resistance masks as alignment. This is a big, big topic. So we'd love to have this conversation with you. So for those of you that are joining us for the first time, my name is Louisa Havers. I'm the creator of the Helix Method. I'm a master cash record consultant and teacher and an intuitive business coach. And I help high achievers, coaches, entrepreneurs to break through their upper limits. And I train and certify coaches and healers in the Helix Method and the Akashic Records. So we're really excited to have this conversation with you all today. And as you're jumping on, let me know where are you tuning in from? Which part of the world are you joining us from? And if you're on here live, or of course, if you're watching the replay, if you're watching the replay, I'd love to circle back and say hello to you. Um, as well and if I don't see your comments popping up as we're as we're live I will circle back and carry on the conversation in the in the comments area as well now I, the reason why I wanted to talk about this was this topic comes up a lot around calibrating to you know to your new goal or to that next level in life and if you've been in our world for a while, you'll know that to change your vibrational attraction points so you can calibrate to that next level, and this is how we work in our programs, then the Wealth Portal, the Helix Method, is to review your vibrational resonance through these four, think of these as four pillars. So think of it as the first one as your embodied identity. So this is where you're creating the consciousness of your future self, the one that's already living the reality that you're, you're currently in the process of creating. The second pillar is around your personal boundaries. So holding the space for yourself, holding the space for your business, holding the space for your clients is really, really key energetically. Uh, the third is around forgiveness. So anywhere you're holding any perhaps self-judgments or judgments for other people where you feel that actually that perhaps it could be fun it can come up for people where, where business decisions haven't quite panned out as they desired yet and so then they've made it a, you know a judgment on themselves or for somebody else so being able to be in that energy of forgiving yourself and forgiving others perhaps if they haven't stayed in integrity with you and this of course is relevant not only for your you know your business but your personal life as well and then the fourth one is taking energetic responsibility because you can only truly release what you take responsibility for, you know, in your current reality, as a and this could be as a result of intention, as a result of limiting beliefs, trapped emotions, energies, your identity, being able to take full energetic responsibility is a complete, complete game changer. And questions that I get asked a lot in relation to this are ultimately in relation to resistance masking as alignment so I thought I'd share you know what I what I do to bust through this and unlock this and the kind of conversations that we've been having in the wealth portal and the helix method and I'm just going to cover two aspects of this today and you might have heard yourself say something like this why does it feel easier and more habitual to stay in lower frequencies frequencies that ultimately feel fulfillment and it can feel like that this is because the alignment is there and and it is but of course this is not where you want to be so that's showing you that that's where you're calibrated to and so your body is bringing you back to that calibration that's why it feels easier and ultimately it's because you haven't changed your identity yet so you're reverting back to those old energetic default set points um, as the inner work to embed your new identity so that you can rise up to the higher frequencies that is where that calibration comes in through that through the manifesting rituals that we teach through being able to amplify your energetic frequency around those higher vibrations so that the higher vibrations start to feel they're the norm they, they're the ones where they start to feel more habitual and easier to stay in and the thing to bear in mind of course is life with life you will go up and down the vibrational frequencies and scales you know you can find yourself feeling really high vibe you know let's say perhaps in the morning something amazing's happened and then you can feel something stressful coming in and so you can feel your frequency shift but ultimately along these journeys of going up and down we have a, a vibrational scale that we use within the helix method up and down this vibrational scale you will have a resting default set point 
And the work that we do is to be able to change that resting set point so it's at a higher frequency. And this changes as your identity changes. And part of your identity is the, the, the beliefs that you hold, the emotions you have, your baseline emotion, because your cells are literally addicted to the chemical reactions of the current version of you. And so your body shows you your subconscious mind and wants to keep you safe so that we can hang on to safety and we can trigger not feeling safe as we move forward on our path to self-actualization. Does that make sense? I just think it's really key for people to understand this concept and to be able to recognize what is happening in their body, why it's happening, and then what you can do about it. So one of the things that I would invite you to reflect on and to contemplate, and this is what I do when I recognize this is happening for me is, okay, so what is the energy that I'm keeping, I'm getting from keeping things stable, keeping things safe, keeping things secure? And what does, where does this plateau, if you've got a business plateau, feel safe? Or well, what's the energy that I get from this? Is it, this feels easy? Is it, it feels comfortable? Does it feel safe? Does it feel secure? And then ultimately, you know, what is it that I'm needing? Or that I think I need from this, but I actually don't need to get it from this specific meaning. So if it's giving you security and feeling stable where else can you create that stability energy without needing it to play out in your business you aren't hanging on to things that you should have perhaps let go of does that make sense this is such a game changer because if we're holding on to to, to safety if you think of it as the bottom of maslow's hierarchy of needs what we're actually doing is we're operating from a, a contraction from a place of um, self-preservation and it does create income stagnation and groundhog day and it actually makes it energetically so that we have to work harder to attract a certain volume of people in our programs and, and stuff because the vibration that we are transmitting is out of alignment with the services that we're offering of, of self-actualization. Does that make sense? That we're creating from preservation and safety rather than creating from expansion and self-actualization. That's when we're in that energy and we're able to create from that space. We're congruent with what we're offering. Does that make sense? So I'd love to know your reflections in relation to that and, and what's coming up for you um, so that we can carry on the conversation in, in, in the comments. And then the other thing that has come up in relation to this, and this is a this is where I really invite you to see this as self-sabotage in the sense of limiting beliefs that are creating this and a fear of success or a fear of your life changing and and elevating and I often talk about the hero's journey and when you're about to step over that that threshold and go on that new journey to your next level so whatever that is for you whether it's you might be creating a new product stepping into a new relationship might you might be working with a, a new coach or stepping into a new program and you know you are triggering your default set points it's in that moment that you are saying to yourself and believing in yourself and saying, right, I'm worth it. I'm worth this next step. I'm going to, I'm going to go for it. And you've made that decision and commitment. And then it can trigger a whole roller coaster of emotions as you step outside of the, the comfort zone and your monkey mind can really do a number on you. Has anyone recognized that, that that comes up as you're stepping outside of your, outside of your comfort zone. And this is the really key thing that I wanted to talk about here is because people will often say, I was making a decision on, you know, whatever it might be, hiring this person, working with this coach, starting this project, and I muscle tested and I got a no. So I've made an aligned decision. And here, my friends, is a word of caution. Has your resistance marked, masked itself as alignment because of the questions that you asked and what was being held in your energy field at this time? So this is something I dive deep into in our programs because you are always calibrated to something and the art is in figuring out what you're calibrated to, which is I do, I highly recommend when you're using muscle testing to work with an energy coach that knows what they're doing, work with a Helix Method mentor so that you can make sure that you haven't, haven't changed your timeline for your desired outcome by going on a, an energetic diversion. Does that make sense? 
So as a leader, this is something that I ask myself a lot, and I invite you to consider this as well, is to think about what are you calibrated to? And are you calibrated to the outcome that you desire? And I often hear people say, and I know I've used this language myself as well, if it's not a full body, yes, it's a no. But actually, it can be a lack of calibration to, to your desired outcome. So if you think of it from a, a, a spiritual perspective, when you're getting a no, it doesn't, doesn't mean that that path isn't for you. It just means that you're not vibrationally aligned to the outcome that you're seeking if your decision was a yes. And just being able to unpick all of this is a huge game changer. So I just invite you to consider that your no might be resistance and your resistance is revealing a lack of calibration rather than the decision being the wrong one for you. Let me know what's landing and if you've got light bulbs going off. Uh, and this is really where you can truly master the art of reality creation and, and help clients make more expansive decisions that align to where they want to go. And this is where you start to collapse timelines and you can have faster results. So for me, when I'm making an expansive decision and I can feel that excitement or the resistance bubbling up, or I'm starting to pay attention to what my mind is telling me, I'll explore my calibration to the desired result. So that what I mean by that is, what is the result on the other side of the decision? Does that make sense? What is the result that my future version of, of myself who went on that timeline is living? And am I calibrated to that? So when I'm muscle testing, which is one of our techniques that we use within the Helix Method, our energy psychology modality, the lens that I'm looking through is seeing where the resistance or the blocks may be in relation to the desired outcome on the other side of that decision first, before I ask if it's the right path for me. So first up, I'll be asking questions in relation to, have I got an energy block? Well, I'll say it as I've, I've got an energy block I've got a resistance, is a, a, a belief, an emotion, identity, preventing X, Y, Z outcomes. So there's different areas that I will look at in relation to, to the outcome that I desire. And being able to transmute the entanglement and the energies linked in with this outcome is absolutely key. So this is where we dive into so asking a range of questions, saying a range of statements to find these these belief clusters, these emotional clusters, these energetic clusters, and the labels that we have given them. Because when we've labeled something, we've made an observation about it, we've then made a decision about it, that collapses and closes down our energy field. And has, I want you to see this as it's created a dam in the river flow. You've closed off other possibilities and probabilities in the quantum field by making that decision and focusing in on that, on that label. Does that make sense? It really is an art. And so that's why we have the protocols for our Helix Method mentors to be able to have a framework to follow so that they know that they can get their clients quick results. So after we've dived into unpicking where the resistance and the energetic blocks and the beliefs and the emotions that are from an old identity that are creating this resistance to the desired outcome that we want, I will then ask, once I've cleared all of that, is this, whatever this next thing might be, hiring XYZ person, working with XYZ coach, stepping into XYZ program, whatever it might be, is this in my highest interest? Is this my highest next step? Does that make sense? And then I'll have a clearer, a clearer reading. Otherwise, my no, if I've got a no, is simply a no to actually the desired outcome on the other side. Does that make sense? I really hope that this helps people because I know that um one of the biggest mistakes I see people when they start doing muscle testing and it's so exciting when you first start doing it it's like oh, this amazing uh way and it is an amazing way to tap into your subconscious and find out what's really going on but there is a real art and a skill to being able to do it properly and to be able to use it as in a way to to create quantum leaps in your life and business and to be able to um, collapse timelines and it really is in the art of knowing the questions to ask and knowing how to follow the energy so that you can truly explore what is going on and be able to change your energetic vibrational attraction point and then knowing which point to do what and, and how to read the the uh 
your energy field using the sway technique because it does all other things other than going straight forwards and backwards it does all sorts of other things as, as well so I love teaching people how to how to read um, their clients energy by really understanding the, the subtleties the subtle energy field and the subtleties within the, the muscle testing so just want to give you some tips here if you've been exploring making decisions and have been getting stuck and uh, really invite you to you know revisit this so that you can get your head around how your energy field and your subconscious is going to do everything it can to keep you calibrated to your current the current path that you that you're on and it's doing that to keep you safe so I invite you when you're muscle testing you can muscle test here so just some pointers that may help if you are considering um you know that next level whatever the next level may be so you could um say belief statements like i have a fear of success and see if you go forwards or backwards on that and of course if you go forwards on that then you want to clear that before you're asking that next that next question you could also ask or, or say as a statement i have resistance to changing my identity of who i am or changing my concept of self and again, clearing, clearing that, and we teach um, using uh, breath work and releasing statements. So through the power of intention, through the releasing statements, to be able to change the that energetic frequencies, those thought clouds that are in your energy field. And once you change that within your field, then you've cleared up your, your aura and your vibrational attraction point in relation to that. And you'll then start to have a different reading in relation to what is what you're calibrated to the other one that you can ask is and or say is I have a fear of investing money in myself or in my business and to notice of course as you're doing this is recognizing okay so how is my body feeling in relation to this what else is coming up for me has a memory suddenly popped in that I hadn't thought about for years and then again, if if you're getting a, a, a yes as you're muscle testing that, to be able to then to, to, to change that so that you are feeling more confident about making investments in yourself and your business so you can grow. Because that's what happens, isn't it? You make an investment in yourself and in your business and then you get your return on your investment. Are you blocking that return on the investment? Because when you receive the return on the investment, you've expanded to that next level, whatever that next level may be. Does that make sense? Another one that can come up for people, and this depends on the labels that they've given themselves, the labels that they've um, felt that they've received from other people, is in relation to feeling like they may have a pattern of investing money and then expecting a lack of results. So you can muscle test that one. I have a pattern of investing money and expecting a lack of results. And if you get a yes, you definitely want to clear that one so that you're removing that label, that projection onto your energetic field. And so simply transmuting that with... I'm ready and willing to release this pattern of investing money and expecting a lack of results. And I'm releasing this from all dimensions, planes, times and levels of consciousness. And another one that you can use as well, just giving you um, a range here that you can play with. If you were to say a muscle test, I trust myself to make good on my investments. So this is around being, you know, fully in your energetic, uh, taking energetic responsibility, being in your leadership energy. If you've got muscle testing and got a no on that, so this is the self-doubt that's coming in and sabotaging you, is to release you know, anywhere and everywhere that you're, you're not trusting yourself and, and releasing that across all, all the dimensions, planes, times, levels of consciousness. So you're releasing it across all versions of reality. Self-trust is absolutely key when you are co-creating and working with your vibration. Then after doing a range of muscle testing on different beliefs in relation to are you calibrated or not calibrated to that, the, the point beyond the decision is you can simply ask as well, I have resistance to this being the right next step for me. And to clear that before you ask any questions in relation to is this, is this in your highest good to do X, Y and Z? Because otherwise you're muscle testing, you're just reading the resistance. And the the calib you're calibrated to the no because that's where you, you're not calibrated to the, the the vision beyond that decision if that makes sense. So clearing any resistance or fear before asking questions about whether this is in alignment with your highest path and purpose. 
So that's what I do. I thought I would share those tips with you. So I connect in with my higher self. I clear all the energy in relation to anything that's bubbling up, how my subconscious is trying to keep me where I'm at and not allowing me to go to that, to that next vision of self. And then I'll ask, is this X, Y, Z choice 100% in alignment with my highest interest? Or you could say, is, is X, Y, Z choice in alignment with my highest path and purpose? And then see whether you get a yes or no. And this way will really help you just make aligned decisions for your calibration to your next level and not decisions that are calibrated to your old identity that you are in the process of changing. So I hope that makes sense. There's so much more to dive into in relation to this in terms of where resistance is market masking as alignment, but I thought this would be really helpful. So I hope this has served you today. And for those of you that would like to go deeper, and if you'd like my help, there are a number, number of ways that I can support you. Energy coaching is the fastest growing niche in personal development. And I, I know that people are actively seeking out leaders and coaches to help them elevate their consciousness and change the vibrational attraction point to have that aligned success in all areas of life. So we're super excited. We are bringing together leaders and coaches for our Helix Method mental training. So this is where you will experience your own spiritual activation and transformation that's going to empower you to become ultimately more of yourself and it will make you a spiritual powerhouse and your master energy psychology so that you can have rapid results and your clients can too you'll have a complete toolkit and framework that you can take yourself through and use with your clients as well you start to use it within 60 days or less um, and I cannot wait to, to see the results and celebrate the results that you uh, contribute to your clients with and for their for their lives and uh, well-being. So if this if you're feeling the pull, then just reach out to me in uh, direct messenger for your invitation. We'll have a chat. And if it's aligned, we'll pop over all the details for you so you can have read through and then just circle back and let me know that you're in or if you've got a question and we will take it from there. Alrighty, then I will circle back and join in the conversation in the comments and of course if you've watched the replay please do hashtag replay so I can say hello to you as well and let's carry on the conversation there sending you all so much love have a beautiful day take care bye bye